friends, it's Terry Gaines, Independent Demonstrator with Stampin' Up! In this video tutorial, I'm going to share eight cards I created with the Nest of Winter Designer Series paper. This paper is absolutely beautiful and I love creating with it. At the end of the video, I'm going to share some additional cards that I've created with the Designer Series paper and the Coordinating Bundle. For the eight cards, I'm only using the Designer Series paper and some punches for the cards. So the paper is beautiful. On one side, you have these great images. On the other side, you have some wonderful backgrounds to work with. In the packet, you receive two each of the six double-sided 12 by 12 designs. This paper is great for two sheets. You can cut out for images, so it's great for all of your paper crafting projects. I cut these three images out of one of the 12 by 12, and there's some additional birds that are in there. I did have to fussy cut these. And in another design, there are these two birds that you can fussy cut them or cut them out with the coordinating dies. These three prints, I love just cutting these and these are great, or cutting them and placing them on a card base. You can add a sentiment or you can decorate them with these images. And I love that the front and back of these two coordinate and I love working with these on um, using the image on one side and the background on the other side. So I'm going to give you some details on those. As I mentioned, there's a coordinating bundle. The bundle will cut out those two images and the designer series paper. And it also has the coordinating stamped images that can be cut out. What I love about the designer series paper, it's already colored in. Love the, the way these are colored in. Now I can duplicate those and color in these images the same way. And I can switch up the colors and have different color birds. There are these four dies that cut out the images, the four images in the stamp set. The stamp set has three additional images, so seven stamps in the stamp set. There's nine dies. Along with these four, you get these five, and this is a focal point die. At the end of the video, I'm going to share some samples and link you, link you to some previous blog posts and videos sharing some ideas with the bundle. So let's get started with the cards. I am actually going to use my Create with Terry Gaines October 2024 card kit. As a thank you gift for a $50 order, each month I give a um, have a different card kit. This month it is the Nest of Winter Designer Series paper and 12 of its coordinating colors. That's for a $50 order. I do have a thank you for a $30 order, which is a different fun fold each month. I send you a packet to make a full-size card, a miniature card that goes on the instruction postcard. Everything is cut and die cut for you. You do need to use your own stamps, ink, and adhesive. And I email you a link to an unlisted video so you can create the fun fold. And this is for a $30 order. If you're orders $50, you get both the fun fold and this packet. Over the last few years, I have different cards you can create on my blog and YouTube channel on using a Create with Terry card kit. But keeping in mind, you can change the colors, change the designer series paper, and um, use those other ideas for different Create with Terry card kits. And if you don't have the card kit, you can purchase the designer series paper in the coordinating card stock and create the cards. So for this card, as I mentioned, I'm using the packet. In the packet, there are 12 coordinating card stocks and there are usually six, four by six pieces of the designer series paper. Now it's going to be a four inch section in that 12 inch section. So each packet's um, is going to have one of six different sections of the 12 by 12 paper. So in this packet, you get one of these, one of these, this design, this design that you can fussy cut these out. There should be at least two birds that are full size that you can fussy cut. You can use these edge pieces and fussy cut that and put on edge of a design or in the inside of the cart. And then you have, so one, two, three, four, five. The sixth piece, I actually cut that because if I cut it four by six, I would be cutting off these images. I wanted to make sure each packet had at least one of these designs and one of these designs. Some packets have an edge design or maybe even an extra bird. And these edge pieces can be used for the inside of the card or on the edge of a 
of a of a design on the front of your card. All right, let's get to our creating. Along with um, sending my customers the packet, I'm going to be emailing them the PDF so they have the photos of the eight cards. They will also be on my blog. You can see the photos on my blog. You'll see what card bases I use for each of the cards. I'm labeling the cards, card one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. And then I have here is how I cut the designer series paper for my card samples. On page two of the PDF, I'm going to give uh, instructions, a uh, graphics on how I cut one of my basic white, one of my base or my two basic whites and my two early espressos. I have code numbers for what's in my card kit and the additional supplies and a link to this video. So I will share these graphics on my blog, but the PDF is only going to the customers that place the order. So in this, in this PDF, as I mentioned, I share the card bases. So the black are for card base seven and eight. They're of gray granite are for five and six. The garden green are for cards three and four, and the crumb cake are for card one and two. And then, so that's all listed on page one. And then on page two, I'm sharing how I'm cutting these. So I'm going to share those details so everyone can be successful in duplicating these cards. And um, then I will cut these and then we'll go over all eight cards. So let's take one of our basic whites. It's already cut at five and a half by eight and a half, which is half of the packet, half of the standard size when you order the packet. So I am going to use my paper trimmer and I'm going to cut four of the inside card bases. Now on the graphics, I show that it's inside for card three and the inside for card four inside for card eight or seven and eight, four of them. I'm only putting them in for the darkest of the dark color cardstock. Otherwise you can write on that designer series, or I'm sorry, you can write on the lighter color card bases. All right, so the first measurement is four. The first measurement is the measurement going across this way. The second measurement is the measurement going across this way. So we have four of them that are four inches by two and three quarters. So I'm gonna put this at four inches and cut this one. And then I'm going to set that aside. And then I'm going to take this next one and put it at four inches and cut this one. So what we have left is a half inch strip. I am using that for card five and eight. So we're going to set that aside. Now that I've cut the four inch section, I'm gonna rotate it and cut the two and three quarter inch section, which will basically cut this cardstock piece in half. So I'm gonna mark that. So this is for inside card three and four. And this is going to be inside for card seven and eight. And that is with the black cardstock and the garden green cardstock. These two card bases are light enough to stamp inside and to, um, to be able to stamp or write on the inside. So for the second card base, I am punching out the um, three, one and three quarters and the two, two and three eighths inch circle punches. Now, if you are using dies, you can use that section for dies. So when I cut those out, what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to actually cut these strips out down here. I'm going to cut a three quarter inch strip and a one inch strip. I'm using those for outside sentiment. So what I'm going to do is use the scale right here on this side and mark it at three quarters. You put your cardstock up against that wall. The light is the scoring, the dark is the cutter. I always start down here and move up. If I cut here, I feel sometimes I twist the paper back. This way I'm pushing the paper up to the wall. So I have a three quarter inch strip and then I'm gonna move it over here because the next strip is a one inch strip. So if I do that first, 
that lives, leaves the rest of this for cutting your, if you want to use dies or if you want to use punches. So I'm going to cut, punch three of the one and three quarter inch for, I hope this isn't confusing. The beauty of the video is you can pause it, you can rewind it and rewatch. So I'm cutting three for card one, two, and six. And then I'm going to go to the two and three eighths for card seven and eight. So then I'm going to go to the two and three eighths punch. I turn them upside down so I visually can see what I'm working with. I'm gonna cut that one and that one. Now I still have some white left here that I could cut smaller punches with or utilize that for outside sentiments. So now, I hope that I hope this is all making sense on how I prepared this. This is the prep work for the eight cards. So that is how I utilize the white card stock. And we get our insides, we get our sentiment, outside sentiment layers. That's what all of that is. We're gonna set that aside. Now I use the early espresso to add a coordinating card stock for a few of the cards. Actually, card one, two, four five and six and card three. So I'm going to show you how I cut these. And so I've got the card listed and then I have the measurement listed. So as I mentioned, the first measurement is always should always be the one going across. The last measurement is the one going down. I do have a notation for these two that I've cut mine at two and at three inches. And the reason I'm going to show you card one and two is instead of cutting this in half, so it's two inches and two inches, I would have been cutting right this bird in half. So what I did was I cut this at one and a half and this one at two and a half. So the coordinating cardstock is cut accordingly. Now you have one, your packet is going to have one of six different options. Now your birds are might be different birds in different locations. So you wanna cut your designer series paper so you have, you're not cutting your focal point of your designer series paper. Then what you'll do, if it is two, if you cut it right in half, you're going to cut two of them at two and a half by five and a half if you're going to duplicate my card. I have a quarter inch extra here and a quarter inch extra there. So I hope that all makes sense. Maybe rewatch that section to, and understand how I'm doing that. And I'll exp explain a little bit more when we look at the designer series paper in the packet. So there's lots of pieces to these cards and I'm doing some of the prep work. So let's cut this. Well, first we need to look at the designer series paper. So I actually, this is in my packet. So that's the first thing you wanna probably do is decide if I cut this at two inches, so I'm gonna put it at two inches and look at this, and if I go right up there, that's gonna be perfect. So this packet, I'm actually gonna cut them in half. So I'm gonna cut it two by five and a half and two by five and a half, and that's going to be perfect. Now in saying that, I am going to cut my early espresso at two and a half by five and a half. I'm gonna make those cuts first. So because it's two and a half, I'm going to look at the left side of the, the ruler, mark this at two and a half. When it's smaller measurements, I look at the right side of the ruler. I'm gonna cut one at two and a half. I'm going to cut another one at two and a half. Now these will be the coordinating cardstock for these pieces. I have not cut this one at this length yet. That is shown on page one. So I'm just cutting this early espresso cardstock right now. So what that leaves me is this section. So what I'm going to do next is cut this four and a quarter. So the second measurement here, I'm going to rotate it and make that cut next. This is going to be for card four. And this is gonna be for layering a sentiment. It's going to work great to layer that sentiment on there. So I'm gonna put that in that pile. And then you get, oh, we didn't cut this. So then I have to cut this at three and a quarter. So 
cut that and you get this little strip left. I'm actually not using that, but maybe you want to add it for a little layer or something. So this is for another card base or a card layer. Now in here, you can see I have this two inch circle. So for this card, it is going to be sandwiched between the designer series paper and the card base. Nobody's gonna know that you take a punch or a die. I'm gonna take my two inch circle punch, go right in the center, center it on the sides, punch this out. Nobody's gonna know that that's missing and it will be one of the layering pieces for the one and three quarter inch circle punch. So that's taken out of that piece. We have that one cut. Now we're gonna go to the second eight and a half by five and a half. So for card five and six, we have two pieces. They're both at two inches. So I'm going to put this at two inches. The card base is already at five and a half. So that's going to be one of them. And this one is going to be another one. Whoops, I think that shifted on me. Push it up to the wall. I like to push up to cut mine. And then what I have left is to cut these pieces. So this one is the same size as this one, but I rotated it to maximize my paper and to be able to get two circle punches out of this piece. So I'm gonna make this cut first, which is the second measurement, which is two, I'm sorry, three and a quarter. So I'm going to rotate this and cut this line first, which is at three and a quarter. And then I'm going to rotate it again to cut it at four and a quarter, which just takes a, eight, a quarter inch off this piece. So this is, I toss that, but maybe you wanna use that for adding a little decoration to it. That leaves this piece right here. I'm going to grab my two inch circle punch, going to punch one circle at one side, another circle on the other side. And that is how I cut those pieces for the white and the early espresso. So that is the cutting we need to do. Now, I did mention on the front of the page is the designer series paper that is cut. Your paper, designer series paper, is given to you in your packet at six inches. Most of the so what you want to do if it's a five and a half inch you need to cut a half inch off so what i do is i cut it like this first and say do i want to take that half inch off the bottom or the top in this case i want to take it off the top i have more um, sky space there if you want to call that and this is a toss and then this now is the same height and that'll be the same height as your card base so for this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut this extra piece off here. Okay. Oops, I want to make sure I almost cut it the wrong size. Um, so cutting it at five and a half. So I've got that piece cut like that. That's toss. And then you have that piece. So for these two pieces, what I've done is I'm going to go ahead and grab those and show you how I've cut those. So... Let's look at this one first. This one is for card seven and eight. And when I look at this, knowing that I have to cut a half inch off, do I wanna do it before I cut it in two inches? And that's what I'm gonna do. All of this doesn't have a bird image. I look at whatever doesn't have a bird image. I can cut that at five and a half inches first. So I'm going to do that. And this is extra or toss. Rotate it like this, and I'm going to cut this one at two inches. And when I look right there, I'm not cutting a bird, and so that's perfect. So that is for card seven and eight. So you're gonna put that aside. So we're gonna go this way. So for card five and six, the designer series paper is three by four, and that is this print. If you choose, you could use this print. For how I designed the card, the card the designer series paper is rotated this way. This birch design kind of is rotated, but I think that's okay. It looks like birch bark, or it looks like tree bark. 
um, versus birch bark. So this is three along the six inch section of that paper. I'm gonna cut that to be three. So I have those two for this card base. Then we are down to this piece. This is the piece that is used for card three and four. And I just cut this in half. You're gonna cut some birds in half in some cases, that's okay. So for this one, one of them, I keep the front. And for another one, I cut the bird out like that. So the bird can be cut out of a different, or I cut it out, you can see right there. You're seeing through the hole punch and seeing that early espresso card there. I should just grab the regular card. So this is an opening. I punched the bird and then I rotated the paper. So what I wanna do, I wanna do the same thing for one of them. And the reason I can't do it for both of them, let me grab those pieces. I'm gonna do that for one of them. Where did I put that? Remember, I cut that circle out. So one of them, I have to hide that circle. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, I'm going to punch this bird out. So I'm going to take my one and three quarter inch circle punch. I'm gonna reach in here and line that up and so I can get the bird and cut. I'm gonna use that bird. Now, this is where I was mentioning that when I turn this over, I have that like that and I'm going to put this like this. <clears throat> This one I'm going to layer like that because we took that circle out of there. Now you can see my circle is punched somewhere else and that's okay. If you wanted to, you could rotate the card like this. I could put the, the bird down here. I could add a sentiment down here. So that's the beauty of creating. You get to play around with this and decide how it's best that you want to work with these pieces. If you want to duplicate my design, you can have that circle up, you can have it down, you can rotate it. So that will be the option for that card. So we are down to the two pieces of designer series paper that we are going to fussy cut for these cards. So I'm gonna put the, the cutter away. We're done with the circle punches. We're done with the cutter. We've got all of this ready to stamp. These are for decorating. Now the two pieces of designer series paper that you're going to cut, it's going to be this packet or this piece that you're going to get one of each of those birds. If you own the dies, use your dies to cut these out. If you don't own the dies, you're going to fussy cut those out with the paper snips. Now I will tell you, I wanted to cut out this section right here. So what I did, let me see, where did I put my paper snips? Here we go. What I did when I cut that out is I cut straight into that. I cut that out and then we're going to mend that back together. So no one's gonna know that we actually separated that to get into that section. Does that make sense? I'll show you what I did here. So when I was cutting that out, I just went in, I cut right through that branch. I cut around and I'm actually gonna go this way. I'd like to see my image. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna see. I have some white space left on my um, image. I don't go right up to the um, stamp or the printed image or stamped image if I'm cutting a stamped image out. I leave some white space because what I'm going to do is attach that to this paper that has some white background so it camouflages all my imperfections. Fussy cutting is not my cup of tea. That's why I love the coordinating dies. So does that make sense? That's how I cut that piece. And so for one of the cards, we're gonna use this image. For another card, we're gonna use this image. And I have that already done. I left that space between the legs. That's okay with me. And then in this packet, this is a bonus piece. You could cut this out and then it can go on the inside of the card or along the edge of the outside. So that is cutting that out. Now for this piece of designer series paper, man, the first time I cut this out, I'm gonna show you, I was not, I don't like cutting these out. I'm gonna show you what happens here. You get all of these little greenery pieces and that's a lot of white space and a lot of cutting. 
So here you can see my sample shows these three. So this is the same bird, but there are different birds. So in your packet, you should have at least two birds. Some of these birds you can use for inside of your card. But what I'm going to do is not cut the greenery because if you look at this design, there's no greenery on that design. There's no greenery on that design. And if you're cutting out these images, you could also cut the berries off. So I'm gonna show some samples with that. So what I did for my paper, I grabbed the very same design so you could see, I cut just the bird and the branch out. I did not cut around the greenery. So hopefully you can see that. And then for this one, I did the same thing. I cut just the bird and the branch. I did not cut the greenery, but that is a personal decision. You can use, you can cut the greenery or not cut the greenery. So that is the prep work before we get assembling here, along with stamping your sentiments. Now I'm gonna pause, stop the video, and I'm gonna connect it to another video because I forgot to grab the stamp set I used. I'm so hey. back. I rearranged my station before I started the video. I'm gonna merge the first video and this video together. And I wanted to share the stamp set that I used. It is on my PDF. It is the Simply Said stamp set. It is in the 2020 425 annual catalog. I love the fact that you have so many different um, events that you can stamp for from birthday to different birthday wishes to all kinds of different sentiments. And they were great for using for the one and three quarter inch circle punch. You can see for one of them, I stamped here. They're photopolymer, so you can see through them and you can punch first and then stamp later. I used basic gray for all of my sentiments on this card. If you have another coordinating color, that's perfect. Basic gray kind of goes with everything, so that works out perfect. So I'm gonna show you how I put this card together. I think it's going to um, help uh, with some, a variety of different tips, including how I adhered this image. So what I have is the card base. In the packet, it is not scored. What you can do is use your paper trimmer and the scoring blade. You can use a simply scoring tool, or you can match up the corners. And when you match up the corners, just make sure you match up all or both corners and line them up and then use your bone folder to crease that. This is a lighter card base, so this is one we're going to write on. We're not going to insert that white piece. Now you could if you have extra cardstock at home. So the first image I'm going to put on or layer is this one here. So we're going to go back to this reference. So the photos will be on my blog. If you place an order with me, a qualifying order, I'll send you the, e the PDF. So I'm going to be assembling card five. Now I cut the cardstock already there. I showed you how I did that. And then, so I have that cut. Now this is going to go right up to the edge. And what I like to do is, I like to use my Simply Scoring tool or my paper trimmer as a guide. Now I am going to let you know, there is a coordinating die. You can texturize this with a die first if you, or a folder, I'm sorry, a, a birch folder. You can stamp on these different layers. I'm going to assemble it as if I don't have the folder, or as I mentioned, if you do, it would be adding a beautiful texture if you put that on. So I put my adhesive on the back. I'm gonna take my card base and push it up against this wall. I have the spacing about a quarter inch, but you can put it closer or further apart or further away from the fold. Now I can hold this adhesive, hold this up so the adhesive does not touch. I'm holding onto the card base. I'm pushing this up against the wall. That will help me get this even here. If it's not even here, I can open this up and trim that off. So I like using that wall to get that alignment. I have that same scenario on this card and this card also. So now that I have that, I'm going to put this piece down next and I'm going to put my adhesive on. 
and you can decide how you want to have this. I typically look for equal spacing on the top and bottom and then decide in this direction how much space I want on each of those sides. It's not always equal on the right and left, but most of the time I try going equal on the top and the bottom. Now this bird is cut out and what I'm going to do is adhere it with the multi-purpose liquid glue. I have my silicone craft mat here. I have an older sponge that, um, it's a circular sponge. I don't know if you can see this one I've dedicated to liquid glue, it's tacky. I just keep reusing it. So what I like to do is, oh, I hope this comes, oh, that's just gotta clean that off. It sometimes is excess. And so I'm gonna just put that there in the trash. Now, with the liquid glue, it is great to put on here. So you, you do have to get the silicone craft mat. That's the best thing to use. And I'm going to dab my sponge into this so I get a very light coating here. And then I'm going to tap it onto my bird image and onto all those smaller images. Now, whoops, just like the glue hardened on that end and I peeled it off, it's gonna dry on this end, on this, and then you just peel it off. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna put this cut part of the branch right up to this edge. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space for a sentiment. And with this multi-purpose liquid glue, you get some um, time to reposition things, but you do wanna be careful because then you might get some exposed adhesive when you're adhering an image. So now you can just put that down and there that image is adhered like that. I did the same concept for this card. I just put this on first. It does not have dimensionals. And then I added that with the multi-purpose glue. The same for these two cards. I adhered the designer series paper. I adhered the two and three eighths inch circle with my, with my favorite double-sided adhesive, and then I added the bird on that one and here. Now this is where I showed you, I did not cut the, the greenery out with it, and I just love how that turned out. These do have the insert because of the dark cardstock, and I will have photos of these on my blog. I appreciate everybody who places an order with me, and these, as I mentioned, are my thank you gifts for October 2000. 24 and next month in the future month i will also be giving um thank you gifts in various forms and I, I guess what i mean is a different fun fold and a different card kit for qualifying orders i also wanted to share on my blog and i'll post the link to the blog post which will get you the link to the video tutorial um, if there is one. I'm not sure that I did a video on this one, but these are using the designer series paper and a card sketch idea. So this one is stamps, paper, and ink and designer series paper. This one stamps, paper, and punches. And this one is the stamps. I colored this in. I die cut it. I have a textured. I have some different dies on this. So this is using my die cutting tools. And then I will link to a video and blog post where I share some of my cards that I created with the bundle. So this one is designer series paper and that die. This is designer series paper and the die in the folder. And then another simple card with punches and designer series paper. This is a fun fold card. Oops, I will give you a secret. I put that on there to hold this so it didn't fly open. And then I need to take an eraser to get that off before I use the card. So um, a little tip there that will hold it. But um, anyway, so this has got dies. I fussy cut that bird. And I have a link to a fun fold card. And I use that same product for this one. And here's another card with that punch idea. So I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial showing you how I use my October 2004 Create with Terry card kit. And um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. And as I mentioned, I appreciate everybody who places an order with me. And if you have any questions, reach out. Take care and happy creating.